Learning to sing is a lifelong journey, but there are many things that you should be doing every day to ensure you don't trip your voice up along the way. Today I'm going to be teaching you about the little things that every singer should be doing each and every day to sing better. Stay tuned. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day from Down Under, my name is Dr. Dan. Welcome to Voice Essentials where everybody sings. Today we are going to be looking at the one percenters. Now in sports talk, one percenters are those actions that in and of themselves don't add up to too much in the short term. On the surface of things, the one percenters appear relatively insignificant, but when you add the one percenters up over time, these seemingly insignificant activities and disciplines contribute significantly to a singer's development and overall vocal health. Now, a word of warning, this video is only for those singers who are seriously committed to the advancement of their voice over time. If you're looking for a quick fix, this video is not for you because what we are about to cover requires methodical and self-controlled approach. There is no immediate gratification to be found here. In truth, much of what we are about to cover is rather laborious because the benefits of the one percenters only evidence themselves over the span of a lifetime as opposed to the fleeting whim of a week. So if you're ready to be rewarded by the boring, stay with me, the long-term rewards are coming right up. Sound check. We singing teachers are constantly saying it. Pee clear, sing clear. The facts are that if your body is dehydrated, then your voice will be far less efficient and more prone to fatigue. A well hydrated voice lowers the phonatory threshold pressure, which in turn allows the vocal folds to oscillate with better mechanical fluency. So get into the habit of carrying your own one litre water bottle with you everywhere you go. Girls, you'll need to drink approximately two litres a day, that's about eight cups. And guys, you should aim to drink about 10 cups a day, which is about two and a half litres. Secondly, you must learn to, without fail, warm up the larynx before every purposeful voicing. It's not only gigs that require disciplined warm up and cool down. If you've got a dedicated practice session scheduled into your, into your diary, then you'll need to prepare the voice for that level of activity. I'm going to add a playlist in the description section below for each of these points and one of the videos will teach you how to construct a great singing warm up but suffice to say the magic is in the doing more so than what you should be doing. And our third one percenter is more about doing less rather than doing more. If you want to be in the singing game for the long term then you need to learn the skill of vocal pacing and vocal rest. No voice is genetically geared to go all day every day. I know many of us love to sing 24-7 but we all need to learn the discipline of periodically resting the voice throughout the day as well as scheduling one to two days of relative rest into our weekly agenda. Now I do have two more one percenters that I want to share with you but please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button if you've re already gained from the three percents covered. Sound check. You walk far more than you'll ever run, but if you want to take up running for sport, you better get your walking technique sorted first, or you could well be in for some pain a little down the track. So, so too it is with your singing. You, you speak far more than you'll ever sing. The way your larynx, your resonators and articulators all interact when speaking has considerable influence on how your voice behaves when it begins to sing. I strongly advocate for singers to visit a speech therapist who specializes in voice so they can have three to four sessions on refining their spoken voice habits. Always remember, you need to speak well to sing well. And speaking of running, see what I did there? Poetry in motion, hey. Every singer needs to work on their physical fitness. If your body is physically unfit, your singing will become laryngeally focused. This means that your larynx will need to do the lion's share of the work because it's unable to call upon and recruit other muscle groups needed for healthy, balanced singing. Remember, 
your entire body is your instrument, not just from your neck up. If you have a healthy and fit body, you're more likely to have a healthy and fit voice. As I stated earlier in the video, I've placed a link in the description section below to a playlist containing videos that unpack each of these one percenters in far more detail. But before you click on the link, be sure to leave me your thoughts in the comments section below highlighting any other one percenters that you think are important when learning to sing over the long term. I look forward to learning from you as I read your remarks. I'll catch you in the playlist. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.